I will say this for Global Force Wrestling. Since Slammiversary, I haven't enjoyed Impact really much at all. This week's show, at least, had a much better flow to me. Now, maybe, to be fair, part of that comes from seeing much less of Conan, not seeing him featured in the main event, not seeing him peppered all over my TV. That's probably a part of it. And while dipshits trying to sit there and tell me to take an L, let's face it, since LAX has become more and more prominent in the programming, the only L anybody is taking is a loss in viewership for Impact Wrestling. Just saying. But there was less LAX, in particular less Conan. Even when he was talking, it was reduced. It helped. It definitely helped. What didn't help this week's show, though, and it's a continual problem, and I think it's going to continue to be, is the writing was shit. Just absolute shit. What is this company doing? What are they trying to do? What do they want to do? What are they hoping to accomplish? I would love to ask Bruce Pritchard, Dutch Mantel, Scott Demore, Jeff Jarrett, Ed Nordholm, anybody, everybody. What the fuck are you doing? This is pro wrestling, not MMA, done a retarded ass, NWA way. What's sad right now is that MMA does professional wrestling better than professional wrestling does. What it seems like is they're trying to latch onto the popularity of MMA and think that that translates over to professional wrestling because a lot of professional wrestling fans have gravitated over to MMA. And it just doesn't. It just doesn't. Part of what makes professional wrestling professional wrestling is the theatrics. It's the characters. It's the stories. It's those things that you have the benefit of doing with scripted television, and in this case, pre-recorded television, that you don't do in shoot fights like MMA, like Bellator, and specifically UFC. You have so much more flexibility to do so many things, go so many other places that MMA can't. So why would you cut yourself off from that and completely restrict yourself from being able to go down that uh, kind of foxhole? I don't get it. Because all you do when you eliminate the characters, when you eliminate the storylines and you make it so heavily match-driven and so heavily match-based and you make the shit so goddamn serious and so much about the moves and everything else, all you ultimately end up doing is two things. One, making your product incredibly boring, which to me is a problem throughout American professional wrestling right now, is they're trying to do this crap. WWE, ROH, TNA, now Global Force Wrestling, same thing. They're all trying to sit there and make it more like MMA, where it's more match-based. It's just lazy-ass wrestling, and MMA is doing wrestling better than wrestling is doing wrestling. And when you try to sit there and do MMA, all you're also doing in the second part is making the crap look even more fake because since you don't have the characters, you don't have the storytelling, you don't have the plot twist, you have to rely so much on the matches that you have to do so much nonsensical, um, no-selling, spot-fest bullshit that nobody gets over. Like, you can see it so often, you're trying to build guys so evenly. That might work in MMA and shoot fighting, but again, this is not shoot fighting. This is professional wrestling. We all know the scoop. We all know the dope. We all know the reality of what it is. Don't hide from that. Don't be scared of that. Embrace that and do what you can that MMA only wishes they could do because they are shoot fighting. I mean, and then to top it all off, you have a bad habit of not following up on important significant things. Like EC3 just won the Grand Championship in controversial fashion, and there was absolutely zero follow-up asking Bruce Pritchard what the hell went down. Zero follow-up in terms of EC3 not being on the show. Zero follow-up in terms of Moose not being on the show. And then to top it off, no Eli Drake on the show either. What the fuck are you doing? Arguably the three people that you should be pushing the most right now, the three people that should kind of be the bedrock for you throughout the rest of 2017 and especially going into 2018 as you're trying to establish an identity for yourself and you find a way to incorporate none of them on this week's show. That's ridiculous. But instead, you started off with Sienna the Savage. I mean, like the whole concept of what you did here with the opening segment was fine. But this bitch is brutally bad on the mic. 
And to me, if she's going to take to going to Twitter to talk shit to people, you should be able to at least get a reaction from the audience that was there live. And she got nothing. And then this all leads to Horseface coming down. Ugh. Was hoping she was chasing Fool Killer, trying to get some carrots and oats or something. But it all revolves around, oh boy, Gail Kim is getting another title shot. Yeehaw. I've never been a fan of Gail Kim. I think she's overrated as shit. I don't get why so many people think she's good. She's a botchy bitch, always has been, always will be, and not that particularly good to look at either. And whenever it comes to Gail Kim, they have a tendency to overemphasize Gail Kim so much that I would frankly be surprised if she didn't win the title come next week. I have no interest in that match at all. Um, at least I will say right before this opening with Sienna, though, the way the show actually kicked off was the Veterans of War and LAX scrapping backstage. It, the good thing about this is it makes you take notice right away. You get right into it, not two or three minutes of video recaps, not two or three minutes of an in, of a intro. You go right into something happening planting the seed of saying hey you need to watch from the very beginning because you don't know what you're going to miss you don't know what's going to happen i appreciate that i thought it was actually a good way to kick off the show but that's just, then the show progresses you've got the random freaking tag match why are guys from triple a and pro wrestling noah on your shows wrestling matches and going over guys that are actually on your fucking roster and not matches with story, matches with purpose, just random fucking matches. And if this is the whole idea is try to do some NWA type of shit, you know why people don't do this crap anymore or don't do this crap at all? Because it's fucking stupid and here's why. You bring in these people from other companies. They're there for a limited period of time. You don't invest any real time into building up their appearances so you get very little out of them because, there, again, there is no real purpose for them to be there. Then you ultimately put them over instead of the guys on your roster. It makes people think, well, this roster isn't that serious. The company doesn't even like them that much. They're putting over the guys from other places. Why wouldn't I go watch the guys from the other fucking places? And then guess what? Once those guys are done in your little territory, they go somewhere else, and then you get no continual return from having them on to fucking begin with. Instead of giving us Garza Jr. a little bit more, who seems to have a little bit of personality, I continue to see him stuck in these random-ass fucking matches against guys from other territories, from other wrestling companies. And it makes absolutely no freaking sense. Stop giving precious, prime-time national television slots to guys that aren't going to be with your company long-term. That is not establishing an identity. That is just establishing how fucking stupid the whole original premise of Global Force Wrestling was and how stupid Jeff Jarrett and the rest of the crew fucking are. This is a dumb idea. Stop doing this shit. Speaking of dumb ideas and stop doing this shit, the, you got the match between Congo Kong and taking on Joseph Park and Grado. It's a handicap match. Here's what I don't understand. I'm glad, so glad I think it was Josh Matthews called this out on commentary. Why would anybody like Grado for what he's trying to do? Not only have I talked previously about how stupid and idiotic the writing is here from a lack of attention to detail because we've got a guy trying to stay in the U.S. by getting a visa by marrying somebody who happens to be fucking Canadian. That's not how any of this works. Now, the fans are supposed to like somebody like Grado who is intentionally trying to use somebody to get something to benefit himself, and on top of that, taking advantage of somebody who is presented in a way that makes you believe that they are mentally unstable. What is eminently likable about Grado and Joseph Park in this particular case? What is likable here? And then, why would we continue to like Joseph Park and Grado to where when Laurel Van Ness is in some type of trouble, and it looks like Congo Kong could potentially do something to her, these assholes cut tail and run. And these guys you're supposed to like? These guys are supposed to be good? That's heel shit all the fucking way. You're trying to take advantage of a woman who can't protect herself, and then when she does need protection, you cut tail and fucking run. So ultimately, she gets saved by Tyrus, who is aligned with freaking Bruce Pritchard, who is apparently supposed to be a fucking heel. Now, what the fuck is going on here? 
Like, if you were going to have somebody come out and make the save here, why wouldn't you utilize somebody, oh, I don't know, like your old grand champion, Moose? Wouldn't that make inherently so much more sense to have Moose come out and make the save here? Why would Tyrus be coming out to make the save and then afterwards talk about there's only one bully? What the fuck sense does this make? It doesn't make any fucking sense. It doesn't. Now, one thing I wish this company would do a little more because they do a pretty good job of it are the interview packages and the pre-recorded packages. The way they present them, the kind of gorilla style that they film them with, the way they present the guys, the gals, is actually pretty good. The Sanjay Dutt, Trevor Lee interview package, pretty good. The Lashley stuff, even though I had the fucking founder, and sorry, you're not getting a position this week because that's just the way it is. If this company's not going to give any fucking effort to actually write a decent show, why would I give any effort to do something different other than talk about this goddamn show in the review? But even then, it's kind of squirrely because we're, we're emphasizing whether Lashley's going to stay or not. And we might say, well, this is just obviously a work, but this is the same stupid fucking company still fundamentally a few years ago that went down this whole path with AJ Styles and everybody thinking, oh, this is a work. He's going to win the title and he's going to stay. No, it wasn't a fucking work. It was a shoot. He won the belt and he wasn't under the contract because this company's fucking stupid. Different name, same bullshit, same fundamental structure. It is the same. And then this dirty or this uh, dirty with Dutch segment with Lashley and Seidel. <laughs> it's literally looked like a mediocre to crappy YouTube wrestling show with some type of production value, but not a whole lot to it. I thought I was looking at an older, grayer Metal D interviewing an angry buff spinner net and a less lame Doug from Bill and Doug. That's what this felt like to me. Angry buff spinner net versus less lame Doug being interviewed by older, grayer, mustachioed Metal D. <laughs> and, and here's an example of trying to present this in part like MMA. You're trying to present them like equals, that they're both uh, valid threats to each other in Lashley and Bourne. And that is a fucking joke. That is the exact opposite way, in my opinion, of how this should be written, how this whole angle should be booked. Lashley shouldn't be bothered with Matt Seidel because Matt Seidel, in theory, should stand absolutely no fucking chance against him. Because, again, for all intents and purposes, Matt Seidel is a jobber. Who the fuck is he compared to Lashley? Lashley is fucking Lashley. He is the fucking destroyer, multiple-time world champion. You know, badass in the MMA world as well. Instead of having Lashley sit there and try to exchange barbs back and forth with Matt Seidel and then eventually go and attack him, Lashley should be a offended at the mere thought that he even has to wrestle this jackass at Destination X. He should be burying him every chance he gets because here's what happens. In, when you sit there and you try to book him evenly and you try to present him as this guy is a threat to this guy and this guy is a threat to that guy, neither one of them really stand out and ultimately neither one of them gets over. If you do it the exact opposite way, which is my way, which in this particular case, in my opinion, is the correct way to do it, by having Lashley be so condescending to Seidel and basically bury Seidel every chance that he gets and act offended and like this is an affront to the Destroyer. How dare this company book him against a guy like this? He should go leave and do MMA full-time if this is the type of jabroni opponent that he's going to have in the future. That gets Lashley hated. That gets people angry at Lashley. And now that gets people potentially behind Matt Seidel because they're like, man, I'd love nothing more than to see this guy beat that guy because this guy thinks he's so much better than this guy. The dynamics of it work so much better. Instead, we don't do that because this company couldn't write its way out of a paper fucking bag. Period. And as far as Dirty with Dutch, you know, this is kind of a trouble sign for me in terms of the product. When the people in charge of creative find ways to put themselves on TV more and more and more, that starts to be a trouble sign of they're in over their heads, they really don't know what they're doing, and they think by putting themselves on TV it'll magically make things better. Jarrett finds ways to put himself on TV, Bruce Pritchard does, and now here's Dutch Mantell with his own segment, like this is really going to help. If you want to do this stuff, that's fine. Make it a YouTube exclusive show. It might not be that bad. 
I'm just saying. Just saying. Uh, the tag team championship, at least there was a reason for this match. And that's cool. And at least we had a title match on the show. That's cool as well. Uh, the fact that it was sandwiched in the middle of the show, I'm not sure if I was so hot on, but that's okay. But not every damn title match on Impact Wrestling needs to be some type of street fight, no DQ, extreme type of stipulation bullshit. Just because these guys scrapped at the very beginning of the show doesn't mean that that's a logical enough reason to have a street fight an hour fucking later. When you do so many of these, it's why these matches don't get over anymore and they don't work because you've overdone them. The absolute last thing you need to be doing is having any more street fights than is absolutely called for based off of the story. And oh, imagine that. Impact actually giving us a story. I'm just saying. Uh, and then just thinking about this again from a writing standpoint, how much of a writing fail this show was again this week. Think about this. You've got LAX defending their tag straps. We know Alberto is there. You've got all these members of LAX interfering and fucking up the veterans of war. Why wouldn't Alberto at least, if not his family as well, come down to the ring to clear out LAX and potentially screw LAX out of the tag titles? Wouldn't that be the logical, sensible way to go? Wouldn't that be a way for the alleged babyface here in Alberto to go over? Wouldn't that be the way for him to get a one-up? Wouldn't that be a way to introduce another element to a story, another layer to a story, to give even more reason for the two parties, the two sides to hate each other? It just seems so logical, and especially because right after this, you go to Alberto talking backstage with everybody. Why wasn't he involved in this? I just don't get it. Uh, the Super X Cup semifinal between ACH and Ishimori, um, I don't think was that bad at all. I I, lo I like ACH, and I look at him, and I'm like, the way he smiles, and he does a thumbs-up thing, I'm thinking, like, man, you have a nice, smart-ass heel kind of look and gimmick there. Um, he should do that. Impact Wrestling could use him in their X Division doing that. Because it's there. Uh... I thought the wrong guy won. I think Ishimori's kind of stupid, my opinion. Uh, even the whole thing they did. Uh, GFW, one thing. Please don't ever, ever do that crap of having Desmond Xavier or anybody else watching the monitor like the knuckleheads at WWE do. It's one of the most overdone things. Stop having them do that shit. If anything, have them come down ringside and watch. Stand at the top of the ramp and watch. Sit at the commentary table even. I'd rather you have, have them at the ramp or sit there and be out in the crowd, or be ringside. If he wants to get a close-up look, then that's about as close-up as you can get. And even the crap they were doing, like the handshake with Xavier and Ishimori, I don't know what the fuck Ishimori was doing, it was just kind of dumb. But we've got the final set. It's Desmond Xavier versus Ishimori next week. I would assume Desmond Xavier's going over, but it almost seems like this company would be stupid enough to put Ishimori over and then ultimately let him go back to Japan because that's going to help your company, right? Uh, but the main event, Alberto, El Patron, Matt Seidel, Sanjay Dutt taking on Loki, Lashley, and Trevor Lee. Oh boy, six-man tag action. Teddy Long's got to be clearly saying, holla, holla, holla. It wasn't a bad main event, and I think a re large reason that it wasn't a bad main event is because Conan and LAX were nowhere to be fucking found. That's what it is. I don't know why you had to insist on Sanjay Dutt getting the pinfall here. Why not make your actual X Division champion look decent, especially since you don't let him keep the X Division title? Uh, did anybody else catch the blurb about Alberto and Low Key having a match next week at Destination X? Number one. Has Alberto's suspension ended yet? Number two, did I imagine them saying that? Or did they actually say that? Number three, is that match for the title? Number four, if it is for the title, why are we just announcing it now? Number five, if Alberto is still technically suspended, why in the fuck are we talking about this on your show? I don't care if it was recorded weeks ago and it's in the can. You can edit the fucking commentary. How sloppy is this shit? Unbelievable. 
But let me come circle back and say I thought the flow of the show was better. Some of the matches I thought were better this week. Um, it just aggravates me. Again, no follow up with the title change. None. Like you waited two weeks to follow up with Sienna. You should have been doing all this crap, video package, all that. You should have been doing that last week. Moose and EC3 should have been a featured part of this show, and instead, they were nowhere. You did nothing with them. And the writing is so bad. So, so fucking bad. So many of us legitimately could write a better, more sensible, uh, tighter two-hour wrestling show on a good shit. Which makes you wonder how bad the shits are that all these guys that are actually writing this crap um, take. Because this, this, this was a poorly, poorly written show again. Stop trying to be MMA, the retarded ass NWA way. Get back to being professional wrestling and doing some of the things that professional wrestling can do that makes professional wrestling eminently much more entertaining overall than MMA as a consistent form of television entertainment. I'm just saying. You can let me know your thoughts on this week's Impact Wrestling in the comments section below. I am the Schleg Daddy and this is OTRS Central. Remember, it's not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. And also remember, I watch so you don't have to. And I hope you're thankful for that.